Carmen Corp has missed the main event. One Whoa. of the hot stories of this entire season, Yens, was this open qualifier and the adjustments they made. And we've seen it happen to a few of the teams that are kind of in the middle. But Carmi Corp is at the top of the the top of the ladder, and they're not in this next main event. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, it's all the chaos that could have come from this format and more. Yeah, it is insane, but it happened. It's somehow. I, I woke up this this morning uh, because we're recording this on Monday, and now I was like, did it really happen? Yeah, it really did. Man, I, so I streamed today, and of course, that's like the big piece of my title because I'm trying to get as many eyes as ever, as possible. And I can't tell you how many people came in and were like, you're trolling. You're trolling. Yeah, I'm like, no, yeah. no, it really yeah. happened. They lost to Su in the upper half. Su is just, and this is a, a kind Again. of a new, this is a new co uh, team composition for Su. They yes. had So leave, Rizex in, but Su just seems to be the kryptonite for, for uh, Carmen Corp. It's the second time they lose in the upper brackets in the double elimination against Su. Uh, yeah. yeah, and they fall to lowers, and then they run into top Cougars. And, you know, I, I mean, people have said all kinds of things about the format, but if you look through those qualifying matches at the bottom, like top Cougars is a very unfortunate draw for Carmi Court. Now, of course, they need to win. They should have beaten Suh. I know that. I'm not making excuses, but I'm saying this is another one of these issues with this format because, it, and, and it's the same for top Cougars. If you plug top Cougars in, they obviously won this, but you take either one of those two teams and plug them into like four or five of the other qualifying matches and they're having the price sweep. They have no problems. So this double Elim format, it just yields some volatility. You know, I yeah. think that there are some better ways to approach the qualification process. I really like what we had last year with Swiss. I think Swiss is something where like your place in the bracket, which is essentially just your seed doesn't have too much of an impact on things, right? Like, obviously, it's going to determine that round yeah. one match, but after that, it's almost yeah. all performance-based. And so, absolutely, you know, uh, Swiss is, is I think, very, very good at eliminating half of the competition. Um, and, and, you know, we saw, I know Crowley was tweeting about it. Um, Dying was tweeting, tweeting about it. I saw Wavy over in NA tweeting about it or quote tweeting them. Uh, they took a screenshot of like last year's day three close calls and they were yeah, just showing yeah. the talent that was in it, right? Like it, 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 these, these qualifiers just are going to yield volatility. And yeah. I, I want to say this too, because it's going to feel hypocritical, but I don't think it is. I'm excited for a lot of these players getting their first opportunity main event, you know? Yeah, and of I, course. I mean, it's always good to see those players come in yeah. and, and do the best they can. It's just that it shouldn't come at the deficit or, you know, it shouldn't really <laughs> well, stop the top teams from being top teams. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that my second point here was the reality is if you look at the quality, the consistency of those top 16s, it's, yeah. not, it's not as quality as it was last season. You were getting a much higher level from top to bottom, top 16 main event, throughout last season versus what we've had this season because you're just almost guaranteed to get some upset, some yeah. misplay yeah. somewhere, a poor seeding, you know, some some new team that's playing for fun. I mean, look, we got Squishy, Alpha Kep, and Kofor playing in the next qual. They're going to play spoiler for somebody. I can feel it. They might, that's a good team, might. right? But, and but so, you thought yeah, just, that just sub crazy would be, you thought sub would be the upset. For right. Carmen Corp. I mean, right. Carmen Corp certainly thought they would be the upset, and that's it, you know? Yep. Lower brackets, unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world, and it isn't. That's what the right. lower bracket that's is right. for. And then Top Cougars, it was very Oof. close. I mean, Carmen Corp was in the lead at some point, two to one. Yeah. And they just they played well, they played together. Yeah. Carmen Corp honestly looked a little boomed. They were not in it. You could see it. Vatera had to do everything. Atto and Rice, exceptional players, but they weren't on the day. Right. And it happens. It happens to everyone. Sure. At that point, Vatera is trying to do everything. He's trying to play offense, trying to, trying to play defense, try to be everywhere at once. And a player like Vatera can do that to a certain extent, can be someone who can carry a little bit. Right. But you're also 
if that becomes how you're playing the series, you're making sure that it's very hard for the other two players right. to actually get back into it as well, because now they're out of position all the time. They're not in the positions where you need them to be. Their rotation is kind of in a rut and you, you get really unfortunate goals going in, mm -hmm. but at the same time, you need to score more yourself. You need to score more yourself. I mean, Simas completely fakes out for Tira yeah. to get back into the game. Yeah. That's brutal. As they mm -hmm. still managed to actually win that particular game, K KC did. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, again, it's not the end of the world. You lose the game, you get back into it. But it had to come down to game five. I mean, Acker bump on Fatira. Yeah. It's and it was chaos too in, in game five because in the last 60 seconds, KC went up. Yes, 1 0. And yeah. I, the, the crazy thing is, I was sitting there watching it and I, I you know, I'm just kind of goofing around. And I said, last 60 seconds, RW Masterclass. Relating Wave just seems to pop up in these like random weird moments, whether it's a qualifier or like yeah. a or like a um like a tiebreaker for a major or something. He just goes crazy at these like just unexpected moments. And um, like I said, I was just being silly. And sure enough, yeah, you know, it comes up big with uh, the final goal there. So the clutch factor was there. For clutch sure. factor, man. But it, you know, you're you're talking about that dynamic with Carmine Corp having an off day and whatever else. And then you throw on the immense pressure. They know, mm. you know, this qualifier yeah. is huge. And, and, and the thing is, like, it is huge for points, and it is huge for RLCS, but I think these players feel immense pressure socially because they know they are going to be ridiculed, especially when you're Carmi Corp and you've had a ton of success and everybody, maybe not everybody, but huge swaths of people want to see you fail. So yeah. that's in the back of their mind the whole time. And obviously, that's just part of competing. You know, these are not excuses, but these are things that lead to that poor performance. These are reasons why this happens. And, you know, there's all kinds of discourse, and I feel like we're just kind of repeating and regurgitating the same things over and over. But this is what we're going to get. We said it before the season started, and then it happened to Rebellion, and then it happened to uh, Resolve, and then it happened to Moist, and then it happened to Dig, and then it happened to Carmi Corp. No one is safe. These qualifiers are brutal. And the rebuttal of just win, it's not fully incorrect, right? Those teams, you do have to win. You have to beat who's in front of you. But a format that promotes or, um, you know, just introduces more volatility than we, we already had volatility. This is an open oh, yeah. circuit. You're not guaranteed anything, right? Everybody no thinks, single Rocket League series is guaranteed a win anyway. That's right. And so everybody that is kind of on this side of just win, it, you know, format's fine, whatever. They're, I don't think that they are zooming out and looking at the bigger picture here. You know, these organizations are, are fielding teams and they're paying out, you know, a handsome amount of, of, of money to, to run these operations. And so I think it is reasonable and fair and valid to allow the teams to earn a spot in the main event through a consistent good performance. Carmi Corp won all three regionals. You can't get more consistent than that. You can't. That is the win. That You win everything. Now, they went top four at major, but that's nothing to be upset about. And so if a team like that can even fall short, everyone yeah. is at risk. You know, every single team that is competing is at risk of, of having an off day. And we'll talk about um, some points and what this means, but Carmi Corp, is going to be, they were currently in the lead, I think it's 74 points. They got their one from, you know, placing 17th to 20 to 32nd or whatever it was. So they're at 75 points. They're going to get hopped by Gentle Mates this event. Um, depending on where Vitality lands, Vitality could hop them as well. Um, BDS is obviously going to be gaining ground, and so is Oxygen and Luna Galaxy and, yeah, and Resolve and everyone, everyone else. else. Yeah. And so the big problem is they're not going to make major. And, I, you know, it's mathematically possible, but it's extremely unlikely. And so the problem is they're going to be sitting at home while all the teams are at major gathering huge points because that, that major two is is enormous amounts of points. Yeah. And yeah, so I, I want to know how Blast feel about this yeah. and, and Epic because they, with the format, let a team like Carmigorp miss the major, miss out on a lot of fans in the arena sure. as well as online. Yep. I can't I can't imagine they're very happy about the situation. And this might be, I mean, John AKO has said it as well. This might be 
actually a catalyst to mm -hmm. the actual form of change that might be coming maybe next year or something, right? Because right. Um, we as Rocket League fans have seen better formats in the past. Uh, so it's not like we don't know any better. Yep. Uh, we can make changes that are better for the esports in general um, wh while still having the teams actually, you know, earn their spot. Yeah, absolutely. And what? The thing is, I too, think not... they really want KC to be there next year. Of you course, know? of course. At every it's, major. It's, it's not even huge changes. It's just tweaks. Mm -hmm. You know, because once we get to main event, like it is what it is. You got your source yeah. stage, you got your top eight single elim. It's exciting Rocket League. The open qualifier system, I think all players at this point know how important it is to leave that barrier of entry open, right? You don't want to build a wall in a in a league play system where six months go by and then you can try again to make it into the league. You don't want to do that. It stifles growth. So the open circuit is is good, but maybe striking a balance where you have that just like last season, we had the top eight in total season points qualify straight into main event. And then maybe you do something where that nine through 16, maybe they skip day one, right? Maybe they don't go all the way to day three, but maybe they skip day one. So they're still in that, um, yeah. that big open qualifier, but um, they can kind of get through the, I mean, listen, day one is, is kind of silly anyways. I'm doing the, the, the broadcast for oxygen and it's really, I mean, I don't want to be rude, but it's a waste of time for, for both us and, and the opponents. It, it's silly. You know, early in the season, y'all shift tweeted out the Furious score where they scored freaking 40 points in a single Rocket League game. I mean, it's just goals, yeah. Uh, it's just such a it, it was, in my opinion, such a silly change and a very obvious step backwards that really it didn't save them any money. You know, it did I just didn't understand why I didn't understand why we had to do that. But yeah, either way, we see the results, we see what this kind of format yields and the dangers of it. Um but I, 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 we'll be fair to it. The upsides of it as well. As I said earlier, it does provide, um, with that volatility, even more, you know, chances for uh, some, you know, maybe maybe not fully developed talent to kind of get get in there. You know, I'll quote, uh, I'm not going to say who, but one, one of the players that I'm cheering for and excited to see them make it, you know, they, they were tweeting out and every single, it was so, like it made me so happy, but every single response, somebody selling congratulations, whatever else, it's all caps. And he kept saying, I'm shaking. I'm shaking. <laughs> like I'm so, I can't believe it. And that is yeah. like, I'm excited for that. I want them to get that experience and it will be valuable experience. You know, that's something and that I have think that a lot of those. you have any open, open format. You don't need yep. Karmicorp to lose <laughs> to, to have that happen. But you're sure. right. The narratives, the storylines, they're right. all there. They're all great. Uh, yeah. W whether it has to, to come to KC to lose before we see that, I don't think that's necessary. You don't either. We just need to tweak it, like you said. You, d you don't need massive changes. And then we're all good. Yep. We're all fine and dandy. But that's not, uh, that's not the only big news over in Europe. As I said, we've got a few uh, new teams this RLCS season, a few first-time players qualifying, and one of them is Alims. Yes. First woman to qualify for a European RLCS event and the first woman to qualify for an RCS event in the world, yeah. uh, you know, re outside re of NA. That's yeah. Um, since RLCS X. So it's been yeah, a, yeah. A, two, a two years, three years, I guess at this point. Yeah. So uh, uh, the first woman to qualify for RLCS outside of NA since that time, or the first woman in the world in general, like outside of NA it's it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. I mean, congratulations to her. The entire team, you know, stepped up, but but mm -hmm. she definitely did. Um, seen seen her play already a little bit in the uh, last couple of months, um, and yeah, I mean, she's up there now. Yeah, it's it's really special. It is very special. It's super exciting too, and and I know it's going to inspire a lot of people to continue Hopefully. on their journey. Um, if you're curious about where to check out some gameplay, I can tell you that Fear actually just recently uploaded a video spotlighting some of her gameplay against some high-level players over in Europe. So um, you can check that out. I actually think one of the matches was against the Twins, TRK and Killers. So um, that's some good content you can check out yeah. if you want to see her gameplay. But that'll be exciting. Tune in this upcoming week. You can obviously watch her and her squad. LaMasia is the team name. They'll be playing in the main event this coming Friday. Yes, Smashy and Matt. I mean, they're definitely a team that 
are only here because of the the format, right? You know, yeah. being so open. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's no nothing against them. They They're know just that. the kind of players yep. that wouldn't be in a top sixteen if if it was more shielded off from outside influences, right. as we might as well call the bubble scene here. Uh, it, it's a it's a great experience for them. I hope uh, as well coming into coming into things, and um, you know they're joining all the teams. Oh, what's their first matchup? Oh, it's not announced yet uh, yeah, as of honest. as of recording. But I mean, you, you're probably gonna have because they made it through lowers. Probably yeah. gonna have uh, one of the teams. Oh, they're um, gonna get one of the top four. Maybe like Oxygen, yeah. Luna Galaxy. Yep. Actually, it could be Sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty yeah, that's funny <laughs> but it could be um yeah i mean it, it's it's amazing to see we've had karma being very yep. successful we yep. had tally bird was the last woman to to mm-hmm. feature in the rss match in N- over in na um she's more busier with uh deep dip 2 in track mania at the moment she's doing really well her personal best is already at like four seven or eight People who don't follow Techmania have no idea what I'm talking about, but it's the streaming event of the month. Oh, wow. um, I didn't know that. It's it's basically getting over there, or go, get, getting over it for it's uh, Benny Follett. You know that game? Oh, I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, but then with cars in Turkmenia. it's brutal. Oh, interesting. It's, okay, it's so hard. But yeah. she's she's. It, it's so amazing to me how some people are just gamers, dude. Yes, and are just yes gods. They just go to different games they and they're at the top immediately. I don't understand. Yeah. But Tally Bird's definitely one of them. I don't know yeah. about LMs. Maybe she's also a goated Valorant. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but, but I want to say... At least in Rocket League. Their, her team with LaMasia is not the only team that's got... Um, or not not the only team that is kind of a, a first appearance or new appearance for certain players. you got Low Block with Goffs, Davouf, and Grema. Um, Goffs, former auction sub, played a big role in their qualification to Gamers 8 last season. Um, Daystar... With Icon, Matt's Gray, and Nico. And Matt's Gray has qualified for an event, I think, oh, early to uh, RLCS X or maybe 21, yeah. 22. Yeah, I would say RLCS. Oof. Um... He has, the, it's, it's one of those two because the next team that I was going to mention is Valiant, yeah. which is Mozzarella, Giuk, and Econ. And Econ is the other. So one is in, tw- in, in Matt's Gray and... was, was full split of RLCS X already gotcha. with Minx. I remember that team. Okay. That and then Econ, um, yeah. another player that's been around for a long time, I think his last was maybe fall 21-22 or maybe winter. Mm, I, what team was that? Mm, I don't know. Maybe it goes Noobs or something? Isn't that what he played for? Oh, yeah, that does sound right, actually, yeah. Or Try Hard? Train Hard? What is it? No, he did play with Gross Noobs, but he qualified with... Uh, mostly with Train Hard. Yeah. But the first one with uh, VANC Bank Gaming, which was also full split of RLCS X. Oh, okay. RLCS X. Wow. Yeah. So it's been a while. It's been a while for a couple of these players, but they're making their way back in. They've got some, you know, younger or newer talent uh, alongside them. And as we said at the beginning, there are definitely, um, you know, some first timers here. It's going to be. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun event. I mean, some some very very first timers even because on low block you have Grandma and on Daystar you have Nico and both those players are newly added to the next up list for Shift. Um, the you can read about them on the article on on Shift Early um, slash article slash next up the newcomers because they're two out of um, eleven. I want to say, yeah, 11 new players to join the list because we've had some graduates, you know, leaving the list and these players are replacing them. And Nico, I mean, on, on Daystar, I've been really Im- impressed by them. Yeah. But low block, I mean, Grandma has seemingly mm-hmm. been carrying that team. He's, I mean, he's very talented. I, I have been fortunate enough to see some of these guys play in the 1v1 arena. Um, and, and we were, I was talking about it beforehand and we'll get to it later in the show, but a lot of mechanical prowess. Um, you know, these players are very green. They don't have a ton of experience at the professional level. And I think that the big thing that separates them is, is literally just repetitions, right? Like the, these, these players that are 
You know, I look at this OG squad and why they don't seem to slip very often. It's because they have an immense, immense amount of experience. You know, Jane Apps, Com, and Nolly have experienced some of the highest highs, right? So when they get into these intense situations, for them, it's just another game. They've already done far more, um, you know, far more intense pressure situations. Whereas these players that are having their first time qualifying for the main event, obviously this is going to be very intense. So uh, speaking about Jay Naps, he's yeah. totally, totally not mentioned that Michael isn't here today. <laughs> right, he's not. Michael, of course, being a big fan of of Jay Naps. Yep. Um, so Jay Naps is replacing him, but uh, shout out Jay Naps. <laughs> he couldn't make it so he'll be back next week hopefully we're gonna we're gonna talk about that in a minute we're not gonna let michael off easy um, no this is gen g yeah that's right that's right we'll get there well europe is gonna be exciting like i said make sure y'all tune in this upcoming uh this upcoming weekend friday saturday sunday as always we got some new faces and we're missing some of our mainstays so we'll see what happens this this next eu event we have oce as well and after Pioneers push power maybe to the limits. Uh, power still come out on top. Is, I mean, is it just going to be the power show? Does it continue, the train continue rolling? Or do you think that there's a possibility that Pioneers, Chiefs, or Kig Gang can maybe uh, pull off an upset? I mean, there always is, isn't there? There always is. And still, Torsos in his dominance with his pixelated shades on top of that car <laughs> has been getting there every time so yep. can you bet against them can you say ah Wait. this time this time you know it won't happen no of course not of course you can't but things are you know as volatile as ever across the world because gremlins yep. we all talked about them have just completely missed out they've oh. fallen in the top 48 oh no so, hmm. I mean, they're out. They yeah. weren't the big contenders, but they were up there. And not anymore. It's not easy anymore. as that. It, it's just, it goes so quickly sometimes. Yeah. It's one day performance. And we talked about it before. Sometimes you're just not performing on the day. Yeah. You just have, it have, has to click have to work on, you know, everything that's going on. Maybe you're feeling a little bit under the weather or the team is not really coming together. Whatever it is, you need to beat who's in front of you. There's no excuses. And then suddenly you're out. Gremlins yeah. had it happen to them. Of course, we have Kip Gang up there right now, which is yep. a team that's it's very promising with the players on that team. Um, but Power, I mean, they're still, still the big favorites. Come. Yeah, I mean, I was... You know, you you were asking earlier, can you bet against them? And I feel like I have been betting against them. I've been talking about uh, the new look Chiefs. You know, young talent, yeah. super lucky, and then I yeah. and then they 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 pull super lucky over to pioneers. I'm like, oh, here <laughs> they go. They've created the team that's going to do it, and they just never do it. So I'm done betting against Power. I'm done. They have won me over. It took almost a full season, but I'm on the Power train. But you know what that means? You know what that means? Yeah. As soon as I die across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now this will be the event that they lose, but hey, they've earned it. You know, if I if I had to be wrong again, then so be it. Power have performed so oh, yeah. so consistently at home, and then even at the major, I think I understand yes. them as well. Uh, yeah, I did this well. well. I definitely they, did. They go to that round five and and look, you know, stronger than some of the other teams that I thought would do better. So uh, I'm backing Power into uh, Open Qual Five, and and of course, you know, moving forward yeah. as well. And th the points are so important. Yeah. So, so I mean. Power winning up qualifier four, that's 20 points, where, whereas winning uh, the regional last split was only 16. So you're just getting there for, you know, with worlds in sight, yeah. this is so important for them, yeah. for the region. It's good to have a team like Power on top, even though, of course, you want to see more teams up there in a smaller region that Oceania is. It's really nice to see that power can be so consistent that even mm. when we're doubting them, even when we're saying, ooh, maybe this improved yeah. Pioneers roster can do something more to beat them, they're still going to be there at the top, even though they're not, even if they wouldn't win next next uh, open qualifier, they're still going to be favorites within the region and yeah. even outside of it, trying to trying to show what they can do. Right.
Well, OCE, just like I said with Europe's on this weekend, y'all be sure to tune in and see what's going on there. We've got APAC as well this upcoming weekend. APAC has turned out to be an entertaining, uh, you know, an entertaining split too, where I think if you flash back to our episode a couple weeks ago, all three of us. Yes. All three of us said, this is going to be the Tho show. He's going to walk in. He's the Carmine Corp Slayer with Su, Top 8, and EU. There's no chance that his team, Gladiators, with Vert and Max U, will drop a series in APAC. And sure enough, I mean, they effectively got swept, right? The, uh, the Elevate team had some tech issues and had to forfeit yeah. two games at the beginning of the series, but then they took four straight. Yeah. So Elevate, um, you know, on, on, the, on the trend of doubting teams... Maybe we need to stop doubting some of these squads. Elevate with the addition of ZPS has, I mean, they've brought it. Yeah, and then you've got a team like LeFish in there with Corrado on it. It's it's still going to be interesting at the very top. Yeah. Um, but yeah, though the KC Slayer, what does that mean even <laughs> after <laughs> after this much. weekend? Not, not very much, maybe. <laughs> no, it... it, it I still think they can come back from it. Yeah, I you agree. You know, getting swept is such a statement from Elevate mm -hmm. that you would say, well, Elevate's got this. And in terms of points, it's so important that you kind of think like, ooh, our Gladiator is just out of it. But no, no, we definitely shouldn't count them out. Right. You can come back against the team. Like every game, they got beaten, but... You know, they can change a little bit. They can change small things within their gameplay to counter how Elevate play, which is very aggressive, um, very on the ball. If if you defend a little bit better against that and can get some better counters to that, then Gaming Gladiators, you know, at least on paper, I know they're not playing on paper, but if they would be, they, they should be beating Elevate. Yeah, absolutely. It's also one of those things where, I mean, we have seen teams form, and sometimes it takes a long time for them to catch fire. Sometimes it's immediate with the honeymoon phase, and sometimes it never seems to happen. So we've yeah. got a situation here where Gladiators could have just taken a little bit of time to build that team chemistry on the field specifically and, and get to a point where they feel comfortable and confident, um, whereas Elevate maybe was more as soon as they hit the ground, they're running already yeah. feeling good so yeah who knows but well, what i said last week I, I think everything's still set up for that to happen namely that we'll see a repeat of last split where the first open qualifier of the split goes to one team second right. one goes to the other and it's decided in the finals or at least close to grand finals of the third and last open qualifier of of uh, of the split and of the season so with you know, every, anything can happen, <laughs> Karen Corp. But if we see anything, then we'll. The last regional would be more interesting in terms of who's actually going to that major, who is actually getting a shot at Worlds, than what we'll be seeing next weekend. But. APEC, as I said with the previous two on this upcoming weekend, be sure to tune in and see what goes on. Um, I, I mean, I think you're. I think you're right on. That's probably exactly what's going to happen. They'll probably trade, and then it comes down to event three. Um, or, I mean, there's always the possibility that uh, Elevate take two straight, and then Gladiators are, you know, they got their back against the wall. But either way, yeah, then it's, I think it's impossible for them. Yeah, it is impossible for them to even get there anymore. So then uh, I think that might even mean, yeah, that means that Elevate is just locked in for Worlds as well, isn't it? Um, is it? I didn't know they were locked in. Oh, well, are you if saying they win, if they? I see what you're saying. If they, if they win they, the sure. next weekend, yeah, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, then they're locked in for London, oh. which means they are also locked in for Dallas. Well, unless Elevate lose earlier in the tournament, unlikely. Um, yeah, so they, if they get knocked out, like, like if they get knocked out top eight. Yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe they're running yeah. the Gladiators top eight. We've seen yeah. it happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> if that happens, that's just pure entertainment, but YMC, pure clannery. YMC, APAC. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. All right. In well, a region with two teams I know. that are so neck and neck, 
you hopefully don't see a, a YMC happening in there, but... Uh... Thank you for watching this segment of ShiftCast. If you do want to catch the full episode, you can catch it in the live tab of our YouTube channel or full episode is on Spotify as well. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you next time.